today we are going to see about renal stone disease hi friends i am dr karamat this is scientific doctor channel in this channel every week a health related explanation is provided via video if you want to see such videos kindly subscribe to this channel also press the bell icon adjacent to it to get instant notifications whenever new videos are released this week's video is about renal stone disease this is also called as nephrolithiasis or in a broader sense urolithiasis we must understand kidneys are there to excrete waste materials from our system and also the excess fluid away whenever some of these waste products are in excess or the fluid that is the water needed to excrete these waste products is less in amount then these waste materials get deposited get clumped together crystallize and may form stones so this condition is called as renal stone disease usually stones are formed in the kidney that's why it is called renal stones but they may dislodge from there they may travel via the ureter that is the tubes connecting the kidney and the urinary bladder and they may be there in the bladder or from the urinary bladder via the urethra they may be passed externally renal stones when they are in position when they are in place in the kidney they don't usually cause symptoms only when they travel via the urinary tract they produce symptoms so what are the symptoms possible in renal stone disease so you can have pain pain in the back pain below the ribs pain in the sides and pain in the urethra where you pass urine and the pain can actually travel sometimes it can be a loin to groin meaning from the back to the groin area the pain can travel because of the presence of stones you can have blood in urine or called as hematuria because of presence of stones there may be stagnation of urine you may have infections there so you may have pain while passing the urine dysuria or you may have fever you may have nausea or vomiting so all these symptoms can be present basically why are these stones form as i said there are various chemical waste which need to be excreted via the urine these are usually dissolved or suspended in the water if adequate amount of water is there these waste materials get excreted via the urine if the water content is less that is if you are dehydrated or if these waste materials are in excess then the crystallization of these waste materials happen and there is stone formation these stones can be as small as few millimeters or even less than a millimeter in size to as large as few centimeters or inches together in size stones can be of different types based on the material which crystallizes to form the stone stones can be calcium crystals either calcium oxalate or calcium phosphate they can be formed from struvite because of infection or they can be because of cysteine or they can be because of uric acid so stones can be formed because of all these things so who are at risk for forming stones generally males are considered higher risk than females for stone disease generally stones form in the age group between 20 to 50 years of age those who have had a prior history of stone that is once they had a history of renal stone they are likely to form it again family history of renal stones again make them at higher risk obese individuals certain medical conditions in which these chemicals are excreted excess in urine for example calcium can be excreted in urine in excess in condition called as hypercalciuria or oxalate can be excreted excess in hyperoxaluria cystinosis cystinuria so uricosuria so similarly in medical conditions in which 
These chemicals are excreted excess in urine are prone to stone formation. Some of the drugs, some of the drugs, especially calcium containing antacids, some of the anti-epileptic drugs can predispose to stone formation. Urinary tract infection itself, if it is not properly treated, that itself can lead to stone formation. So these are all the conditions in which stone formation tends to occur more. Essentially, we have to consider whenever you consume less water and you are dehydrated, so you have less amount of water to carry these chemicals, then these chemicals can crystallize. So, a general risk factor is not ingesting enough water. So, we have seen the symptoms of renal stone disease. So, with these symptoms, if you go to a doctor, how does he diagnose? As we have already seen, he will see the history, he will examine you, but in addition, he may do tests like an ultrasonogram, rarely an X-ray, a CT or MRI and other special scans to find out about the stones. To find out about the complications due to the stones, he may also do some blood test because Stones, if left untreated, can even lead to chronic kidney disease or simply called as kidney failure. So, he will do appropriate tests. And ultimately, to find out the reason for the stone formation, some other tests, both urine and blood tests may be required. What is the treatment for renal stone disease? Generally, smaller stones, smaller than or equal to 5 millimeters generally tend to get passed via the urine itself. They may have symptoms, but they do get passed in urine, both for pain as well as to make the stone get passed in urine, they may prescribe you medicines. But if medical management fails or if the stone is larger in diameter, usually more than 6 millimeters or more in diameter, or if they are in critical positions, Doctors may advise you further procedures. One of the common procedures is called as lithotripsy where shock waves using ultrasonic sound waves are given and these stones are shattered into smaller pieces so that they may get passed in urine. Or if the stone is not amenable to lithotripsy, they may use urethroscopic procedures or sometimes may resort to even open surgeries. How do you prevent yourself from getting renal stone disease? As I said, the first and foremost is ingestion of enough water. At least 8 to 12 glasses of water is required per adult per day. This variation is because of the climate and the environment which you live in. So if you are losing less of water, you will require less water. But if you are exercising, you are in a tropical climate, you are sweating more, you will require more water. So how do we know that we are ingesting enough water? Just check the color of urine. If your urine is pale yellow or colorless, that means you are ingesting enough water. If it is darker in color, that means you are ingesting less water. Try to take in more. That's the most important step in prevention of stone disease. So if you have got already stones and doctor has determined which type of stone it is, then we may have to undergo certain dietary modifications and restrictions. Generally, a high salt, a high sugar diet is more prone for stone formation. So avoid these in general. If you are having uric acid stones, you may be advised to undergo a reduction in non-vegetarian that is meat based diet so that the purines which are there in the meat protein is less so that the uric acid formation is less and if for any other reason you are passing uric acid stone again your non-vegetarian diet should go down oxalates are rich in oxalates are rich in spinach peanuts chocolates so if you are having calcium oxalate stones you might be advised to cut down on this but even though you are having calcium stones, advice is never given for reducing calcium from the normal intake because if you lower your calcium intake, 
oxalate the calcium oxalate ratio is going to go change oxalate is going to become more oxalates can get crystallized can get deposited and can inversely lead to even more stone formation so calcium is never asked to be taken in reduced quantity but it should be taken in the normal quantity if you are overweight or obese a healthy reduction in weight is required but for weight reduction if you choose a high protein based diet then again it may be a risk factor for stone so kindly consult your doctor before embarking on any radical diet regimens if you are having any specific medical conditions in which there is no excess of these chemicals passed in urine you might be required to take drugs on a long term basis so if you have oxalates or uric acid in urine to reduce this there are medicines to reduce this excretion in urine you might be asked to take those medicines in long run what about herbal remedies no and magic no potions or pills there is no magic potion or pill there are no proven remedies against this you will generally take measures so that you take more water and pass a dilute or a normal urine that's what is required otherwise the said measures are enough but if you have already stone disease then it is better to get consult with a doctor and decide the treatment accordingly and especially even if you have passed your stone spontaneously it is always better to strain the urine get the stone and get it chemically analyzed to see the type of stones so that you may do appropriate preventive measure friends hopefully this video would have been helpful in understanding about renal stone disease if you like this video share it among your friends and relatives if you want to see such videos subscribe to this channel till we meet again bye